I'm Priscilla and through this presentation I'll be touching on the streamlined TIA submission process as well as the other related revisions that have been introduced recently. Previously, development and review of TIAs that require high-level assessment or micro-simulation would be broken down into different stages where consultants would usually only proceed to develop future models after LTA have cleared the base year models. This process allows for LTA to better guide the consultants and avoid abortive works down the road. However, this also resulted in a much longer duration to clear the study and this was identified as an area for improvement in our review exercise. To avoid excessive delays in the TIA submission process, the TIA process has been streamlined and split into two main phases. Phase 1 is the TIA report preparation stage where consultants are given a time frame depending on the TIA classification to prepare the report starting from the scoping meeting date. At the end of the given time frame, the consultants will submit the report to LTA for Phase 2 which is a review of the submission by LTA. Under Phase 1, which usually starts with the scoping meeting, the consultants are expected to provide LTA with a program schedule that details the time required for the different components of the TIA report, such as data collection, model preparation, analysis, and so on. As the consultants prepare the report for submission, they can contact LTA to clarify and confirm key parameters and assumptions for the TIA and also to seek feedback for their models. At the end of Phase 1, they are expected to submit the full TIA report for LTA's review. Under Phase 2, LTA divisions that usually includes local planning, bus planning, de development and building control, traffic scheme design and the active mobility group will start the review of the TIA report. Depending on the study purpose and area, other divisions may also join in the review of the TIA report. LTA's Development and Building Control Division will usually function as a point of contact between LTA's internal divisions and the consultants. The TIA will be closed once the consultant has addressed all review comments adequately and when there are no further comments by LTA on the revised TIA reports. In order to gauge the duration required for preparation and review of the TIA, consultants and developers can refer to the three TIA classification types. To recap, Type 1 TIA is generally used for single development, where the junctions, usually up to five junctions, are assessed individually. Type 2 TIA is generally used for district level, large, or multi-use single development. The study area can go up to 12 junctions and they are assessed either individually or together with micro-simulation. Type 3 TIA is generally used for regional or town level master plan and the study area usually goes beyond 12 junctions. Such TIA requires high level and micro simulation assessment. For Type 1 TIA, the scale is smaller and usually takes about 3 months for the consultants to prepare and another 3 months for LTA to review before the approval can be given. As the scale of the TIA gets larger, more time will be required for the preparation and review with Type 2 taking about 4 months and Type 3 about 6 months. The review process includes several iterations between consultants and LTA and the time taken to review largely depends on the quality of the report submitted. Further to streamlining the TIA submission and review process, we have also included a 15 workday response time frame for the submission review and response stage as a guide for both LTA and traffic consultants. Should additional time be required for the TIA review, LTA will inform the TIA consultant. The consultants are also expected to inform LTA if they require more than 15 workdays to rectify or review the comments given by LTA. LTA also reserves the right to alert the developer if the consultants are very late in submitting the report or requires too long a time to provide their response to LTA's review comments. Developers are also recommended to be kept in the loop so that they are aware of the progress and the issues faced in the TIA review process. To help to ensure the submission of quality work, LTA published an addendum in January 2020 as a supplement to the TIA guidelines. The addendum includes several key components for TIA submission, such as the detailed requirements for transport models, a comprehensive guide on the assessment of the development's connectivity to public transport nodes, guidelines for quality assurance of TIA submission, and post-implementation review. The full TIA guidelines as well as the TIA guidelines addendum can be found on the LTA website. 
In summary, this presentation has covered the streamlined TIA process, which includes two key phases, as well as introduced the different timeframes in place to shorten the time required to obtain approval for the study. Hope this has been helpful, and as mentioned previously, more details can be found in the TIA guidelines, as well as the TIA guidelines addendum on the LTA website. Thank you.